Today, I'm gonna to show you how to control your live streams in OBS using nothing but your cell phone for free. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss a new video. The first thing we're going to do is download an application called Touch Portal. The link is in the description. This is the website right here, and I just scroll down to the bottom where it says Download Touch Portal. I'm going to download the Mac OS version, but if you have Windows, the process is the same. I click the Download button. I'm gonna click Save File. Then I'm gonna go to where I saved that file, and if I double click on the install package, it's going to tell me that it doesn't wanna do it because, of course, it's off the internet. The way you get around this on a Mac is by right clicking it and clicking open. Then you just click open again and you are in. Next, you just click continue and follow the instructions to install it. Once your package is installed, I can go into applications and I scroll down and I just double click on touch portal and it opens it right up for me. Now when it first opens, it's going to have some default stuff. You can just right click on the icons and delete them. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all my icons here. Once I have all the example icons they created deleted, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my OBS. And there you go, now it's running. And back in Touch Portal, I'm gonna click this little plug button, and I'm gonna click Connect to OBS. And you'll see a little message here, tells you that it's now connected to your OBS. It's really that easy. Now I'm going to click the location where I want my first button, and there are all kinds of inputs that you can put in here from really simple ones to really complex ones. In order to run your OBS stream, we're gonna keep it pretty simple here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and expand OBS, and I'm going to scroll to the top of that and click Scene Selection. I'm going to add in my first scene by clicking Select Scene, and we're going to add the Coming Soon scene, and then click Save. Then in the text box over here, I'm going to name it Coming Soon. I'm gonna move that text to the top of the little icon bar, and I'm going to select a color for it. You can see when I select the color, it doesn't actually show up. So I have to scroll down a little bit and uncheck transparent background. And now you see the color show up. Now I wanna change that icon. So I'm going to click the change icon button. Then I'm going to select from icon packs. And then I'm just gonna find an icon that matches what exactly I'm doing with this particular scene. In this case, it's kind of a wait or a hold screen. So I'm gonna click this little stopwatch here. And I think that's what we're looking for. I'm going to click save. And now you can see we've created our first button. And I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna add all my scenes. This one is for my gaming channel. And the next scene I'm going to add is the intro. And I'm gonna type that in the text box, move that text to the top, add a color, remove the transparency from the color. Then I'm going to add an icon and then click save. The next one's gonna be my main game and the process is exactly the same. Over in the OBS sources, I select scene selection. I use the drop down to select the scene I want, click save, put in my text, move that text all the way to the top, add a color, make the color untransparent, and then choose an icon. And there's one more scene, I'm just gonna add that in here real quick. This is my be right back scene. So now I have all four of the main scenes that I use for my gaming channel. Next I wanna add in a way to reset my countdown. And this is just in case my coming soon scene is up, but I need a little more time, I can reset my countdown timer. This countdown timer is a widget, so if I just remove the countdown timer and re-add it, it automatically starts back at five minutes. And that's how this works. And the way I'm gonna do that is go to the sources selection. I'm going to select the scene, and this one happens to be on my coming soon scene. And I'm going to go ahead and under sources, I'm going to select the countdown. Then I'm going to add the name countdown, change the color, add an icon, and now we're all set with that one. The next button I wanna add is one that a lot of people don't really think of, but I think this one is pretty important. Some people call it a dump button or a cough button. I'm just gonna call it mute here. And it's a way to turn off my microphone if I have to cough or burp or whatever while I'm on a live stream. And the way I'm gonna do that is go to the sources selection. I'm going to select the scene, which is main game. Then I'm gonna scroll down to me audio. This is my audio. I'm gonna click save. I'm just going to type mute as the text, move it to the top. Once again, I'm going to create a background color and make it untransparent. And then I'm going to select an icon for this. That mute icon is pretty good. So this is really all of the things that I need to control my main scenes 
I don't really need much more than this. But I also run a soundboard on my main game screen. So I'm going to add another page of buttons to run my soundboard. To do that, I'm gonna go up here and click New, and I'm going to create another board called Soundboard, and click OK. Touch Portal gives you two free pages with eight icons on each page. So that's a grand total of 16 different functions that you can use right from your cell phone for absolutely nothing. The next thing we have to do is give ourselves a way to get between the two pages. And this unfortunately takes up a button, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna go back to my main page, and I'm gonna click to add a button. Then I'm going to go into navigation, and I'm gonna click go to page. Now I'm going to select the page I wanna go to. In this case, we're gonna wanna transition to the soundboard page. So I just click that, and I click add. Now I'm going to name it Soundboard, and of course I'm going to add a background and an icon, all the same things we have been doing. Now I'm going to use this drop down at the top to switch to my Soundboard page that we just created. I'm going to select where I want my button to be. I'm going to go to Navigation and select Go to Page. Now I'm going to use this drop down to select my main page and click Add. Then I'm going to name this Scenes, move it to the top, put a color in there, all the same things we have been doing from the very beginning add our icon, and boom. Now we can go back and forth between our two pages. One goes to scene and one goes to soundboard. Next on the soundboard, I'm going to want to add my audio in. So to do this, I just select an empty space. I'm going to scroll down to the OBS actions. I'm going to the sources selection, and all my soundboard stuff is in my main game screen. So I'm going to select that as my scene source. And then under sources, I'm going to scroll down to my first soundboard entry. In this case, it's hump day. And I'm going to select that and click save. I'm gonna name it, add an icon, all the kind of stuff we've been doing all this time. Now how the soundboard features work is this. I download audio clips and I put them on my computer. Then I add them into my stream in a soundboard bracket. I set each of those clips to not loop and to start whenever they're active. Then I uncheck the little I next to those things. And what that does is every time I click one of these icons here that I'm setting up now, it's going to make that clip visible, which actually means it activates the clip and it will play. Then once the clip is done playing, I just click the button again to unactivate it, which will turn off the little eye next to it in OBS. And it means that next time you go to activate it, it turns on the eye and it will play the clip again. So these buttons are kind of click twice, once to turn it on and once to turn it off. Once your clip is done playing and you turn it off, then you can turn it on again if you want to use that clip again. And I'm just going to go through the exact same process we've already been following in order to add all of my audio clips. And the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add another mute button on the soundboard so I don't have to switch over to scenes if I need to cough or I want to mute my microphone for some reason. It's one of those standard buttons I pretty much put on every board I ever use just in case. So now we have two pages of buttons that we can use to control our live stream. The next step is to go into the App Store for your phone, whether it's Android or Apple, and search for Touch Portal and download the application. Once you have the application installed on your phone, all you have to do is connect it up. So make sure you have your Wi-Fi connected on your phone to the same network that you're using on your computer. Make sure Touch Portal is working on your computer and then on your phone, all you have to do is click the refresh button and it's going to go ahead and search the network and connect to your touch portal on your computer. It really does work just that simple. Now that everything's hooked up, I just press a button to change the scenes. This is my main screen right here. You can see when I click the mute button, my Mi Audio disappears out of my audio mixer. Then when I click it again, the Mi Audio comes back. The response time on this is amazingly fast. You click the button, it switches right then and there. There is no wait time. Now when I flip over to the soundboard, if you watch my audio meter, when I click the button to activate one of the sounds, it shows up at the bottom. If I click it again, it disappears. And here on my coming soon screen, you see my countdown timer. If I click the countdown timer, it turns it off. Then when I click it again, turns it back on, starts up at the five minute mark. Works exactly how I wanted it to work. This app is absolutely awesome. I love it. I use it all the time. If you want a deeper dive into how to create a soundboard for your OBS, you should check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.